Welcome to Arts Westchester Virtual Art Workshop. My name is Becky Mills and I'm a teaching artist with Arts Westchester. So for today's workshop, what I'll be doing with you is teaching about tessellation patterns and the artist Monir Sharadi from a farm in. So tessellation patterns are patterns that use geometric shapes in which the geometric shapes fit with one another which creates a repetitive pattern. So for instance, if you were to take triangles and find a way to make a pattern with the triangles, let's say one triangle's facing up, one tri triangle's facing down, and then you fit them together and you repeat that pattern over and over and over and fill the whole page, it will look like it's going on for infinity. So tessellation patterns do that same sort of uh, idea or concept where they fit the shapes amongst each other. Now, where Pharma Farman's work fits into that, she takes those ideas and then she also takes uh, Islamic visual traditions, which are based off of tessellations, and makes it a more contemporary and fun type of uh, style. So that's what we'll be doing today. Um, I'm not going to necessarily be doing an exact tessellation pattern, but what I will be doing with you is showing you how to take those concepts and take Pharma Farman's concepts and make a piece of work that has all these fun different concepts in it using geometric shapes, using patterns, and using repetition. Now, I highly encourage you to look up Pharma Farman's work. She recently passed away, but she is a phenomenal artist in the modern world, and she is international, so there's plenty of websites and plenty of articles that you can read about her so you can learn more about her. So let's get started on this project. So for supplies, we have a lot of different options. So most importantly, a nice clean piece of paper, a ruler, which is going to be very helpful for when you make shapes such as squares or anything with a straight line. Um, also for background lines, which I'll explain later. An eraser, or if your pencil has an eraser on it, then even better. This is my pencil. As you can see, no eraser, so everything's separate. But a pencil and an eraser is very useful for this. A pencil sharpener, mine's a hand sharpener. For circular shapes, I found objects that could be used. So for instance, this is a lid to a candle. This is a lid to seasonings. And this is a lid to a bottle cap. So the reason why I have three of them is because you can have three different sizes. Um, so small, medium, large. And the reason why I found objects is because it makes it easier for drawing perfect circles rather than trying on your own. Or if you have a compass, that's cool. I don't have one of the, um, the compasses or the protractors that you use to make circles. That's the motion that you do <laughs> with them. Um, so those are the most important supplies to have. Uh, so these can be sort of optional as far as making your work colorful, but I'm gonna explore these different options because for the sake of the video, but I'm using permanent markers, colored pencils, and gel pens. And I'll explain later what makes gel pens so great. Also, a regular ink pen could be used great also, um, and I'll explain again why that will be great later on. And if you have crayons, crayons could be used, um, or any other type of colorful drawing material, but these are the ones that I mainly have and what I'll be using. So to get started, think about what shapes you want to use. So I'm gonna start with a different series of shapes so that there's depth to it, 
but also so you can see what you can do with these different shapes. Now, since I have these beautiful circular shapes, I'm gonna start with them. So, don't get too stressed out about the placement of where things are, because again, that's what makes these erasers so useful. You can just erase if you are not happy with where you place something, but if you want to keep playing around with things, make sure you draw very lightly so that you can erase. Now, I'm gonna start here. Let's make this nice circle. So, we start with this circle. All right, now I wanna kind of make it somewhat of a pattern. So, I'm gonna put another circle a couple inches next to it. And keep going. Three circles. Now let's use this smaller one in between it so that it's a nice pattern going. Now maybe I want to expand on the shapes that I'm using. So let's see. I like triangles so I'm going to put some triangles underneath these circles. So that's where this ruler comes in handy. So my triangles, I'm going to make them two inches. If you had a chance to look her up, Monir Sharadi Pharma Farman, You'll notice that a lot of her work, even though it uses repetitive shapes and patternings, it's not necessarily the most perfect um, image. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because as you can see, these aren't necessarily super perfect, but we have a pattern starting. Now, I want to add more repetition to these triangles in the same way that there's repetition to these circles that I'm using. So what I'm going to do is make slightly smaller triangles that will fit between the triangles and the circles. So by doing that, we have these smaller circles next to these larger circles. And so I'm going to make smaller triangles underneath where the smaller circles are. So. The larger circles, I made them two inches on each side. So for the smaller circles, what I'll do is one inch. And I'm gonna put them at the bottom of the smaller circles. So one inch. And when I say it's not necessarily the most perfect. What I mean is, it's not a perfect tessellation. So if you looked up tessellation patterns, they are perfect and they kind of have to be because that's how you make it look infinite. Whereas these aren't perfectly fitting into each other, but they are gonna be very repetitive the more we go on and we're gonna have a lot of fun with it. Okay, so now I have my smaller circles underneath this. So now we're gonna start introducing some other shapes, right? Just to really play around with space, play around with patterning, and playing around with the geometry. And what I mean by space is when things are larger or smaller, they look closer or further away. So I really want to have this idea of large and small as though things are coming back and forth in the photo or in this picture. So I'm going to introduce some squares. So let's see, we don't have a lot on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is make a pattern of squares going up and down next to each other. And that's going to be the motion with my that I'm doing with my hand. That's going to be the squares. So let's make them slightly large 
because we have these large shapes and so I kind of want to keep this repetition going of large, small, large, small. So again, let's see. I think a good size would be something similar to these larger triangles. So I'm gonna do squares that are two inches. So we have first square. Now I'm gonna do a square that is slightly above it. So where my hands are, that's where I'm gonna start drawing it. So second square. Two inches. Now you don't have to do something like what I'm doing, of course. I really encourage people to always explore and always use their imagination and always think about what makes them happy. My example is just to help you understand how these patterns can work, different concepts that you can do, and ideas that could be thrown in there as you go along, and also how fluid you can be. You know, like, I'm just making this up on the fly, but I also want you to really think about, okay, like, I like things to be this way. I like things to be super organized. Whereas I'm more so, like me personally, I'm thinking, you know, like I, I like thinking about the balance between what could be, what couldn't be, let's have a lot of fun with this. But if you're a really organized person, then make it as organized as you want it to be. That's the fun with tessellation. You can be a perfectionist with it and it'll work to your favor. All right, let's continue on. With these squares, I'm thinking based off of the size and based off of the space that I'm giving each square in between, it's looking like there's gonna be about five going across. Let's see how this works. Uh, yep, I might be right. Okay. Now, I usually really love to have music playing while I work. Music helps me concentrate. If you can, you should play music and really enjoy your time. Really relax, you know, especially if you're home. Just have fun. All right, we're on our last square. And feel free to make your design as complex as possible. Mine isn't going to be super complex because this is an example and I also don't want to eat up all of the time. <laughs> so here, now we have this pattern where shapes are repeating and we have large and small. We have some space and depth to it by this large and small, this in and out, and it's gonna look more in and out as we add more to it. Now, what I'm gonna start doing is adding lines in the background. Um, and what those lines are gonna do is make this look as though there's some sort of grid, but also connect all of these different shapes together. So we have these circles. Circles are kind of hard in the sense that they don't have edges, but that's where you can have freedom to say, hey, I'll put this line wherever I feel like. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna start in this corner here add some lines in the background based off of the shapes. Oh, they're looking like triangles again. 
I love triangles. Don't know why. They're just a really beautiful shape. Oh. So what I'm doing is connecting the circles together with these lines that are forming these triangular shapes. So you can see the top here, how I'm connecting them together. And then now, what I'm gonna do is connect the smaller triangles to the larger triangles using lines. And now I'm gonna use lines to connect the triangles to the squares. And what I'll do to fill in some of the space is just kind of line things up. And I'll show you in a second what I mean by that. Now I have made my never ending pattern by connecting all of it. And so now we're gonna color things in. So now that we have our pattern going, this beautiful image, once you get to this point, start thinking about what colors you wanna use in your picture. I'm gonna use more warm tone, but you can use a combination of warm and cool or look at a color wheel and think about what colors are next to each other, what colors are opposite of one another, and really play around with the type of color schemes that you can use in your image. So, like I said, I'm gonna use more warmer tone colors, but then throw in some cool tones to give it that accent. So let's get started. Like I said, when it comes to coloring in your image, you should really explore your options and have fun with it, but also just use whatever you have available. So if you have regular markers, if you have crayons, colored pencils, whatever material that you have available, you should use it. For me, I have permanent markers and I have colored pencils. And I also have these really cool gel pens, which I'm gonna get to you about what makes these fun for, for projects like this. But let's start with coloring it in. So like I said, I'm going to be sticking with more warmer colors. Um, and as you can see, I threw in some accent colors with cool tones. So we got the green, which is a cool tone. Purple is a cool tone. This shade of blue is a cool tone. And I think that's it for the most part. The rest are these nice warm colors. So again, you can think of what kind of patterning you want to do with your colors. I'm going to have a little bit more fun with it in the same way that Monir Shirati from A Farman would. So if you look up some of her untitled work, which is a lot, so it might be a little overwhelming, but she has works on paper where it's very similar to what we're doing, where it's not a perfect tessellation, but it is repetitive images using tessellation inspiration and Islamic tradition inspiration. And the colors don't necessarily make a perfect pattern, but you can see repetitive colors in the sense where she figured out a color scheme that she wants to use in her picture. Now, I didn't want to overwhelm the image with too many colors, but I like a lot of colors, so I picked a pretty big handful. So let's see, I'm gonna start with this green, and because I want it to be an accent color, that means that I don't necessarily want it to take up too much of the space, but still have some sort of presence. So I'm gonna bounce it around, and let's just start here. So I'm gonna color in this shape, and so now I have it in this upper corner, but let's bounce it around. Where would be a nice place to put it? I have this triangle over here. Keep the triangle patterning going. And then even maybe a square. And I, have been able to find a way 
to spread the color around the picture without making it too dominant. Let's use some red. Now, you don't have to always necessarily fill in every single space. You could also create patterns within the pattern. So that's what I'm gonna do with this red. I'm gonna use this red to make stripes. So I think it'll be interesting to do that in a circle. So let's get another warm tone. Let's get this orange. And maybe what I'll do with this orange is color in some shapes. Now, one thing that I like to do is layer my materials so permanent marker is wet so it's a little harder to draw on top of that with the colored pencils because you would have to let it dry first so for me i prefer to start with dry materials then lead to the wet materials so colored pencil first and then permanent marker after and then uh, we can also incorporate some of the gel pen with some lines and patterns. So I have some pink stripes here. I'm going to do some pink stripes in this triangle over here. So, so far, as you can see, we have a lot of really fun things going on. Let's continue. I'm going to use this nice shade of golden yellow. I'm gonna color in this circle. Let's get a nice accent color going with this lavender. I think I'm ready to start using some of these Sharpies. So what I want to do with these is kind of use these thin tips to outline these shapes. So for instance, I have this triangular shape up here. And I have some lines here that I think are really nice. Then I can also use this to create more patterns inside with the lines. Can color in some of these shapes. So let's color in this triangle. I really like this color. So now I want to use this gel pen and I think gel pens are good for outlining things. So what I'm going to do is use it to outline some of these shapes and make a nice dense dark outline to kind of add on to these colors um, and give it again some more depth. Um, adding on to these cool and warm and then black is a neutral color. White is also a neutral color, brown, gray, those are neutral tones. So I think it's nice to incorporate different uh, color schemes and different colors into a project like this. So let's get some black lines going.
and let's just use a little bit more red so I want to fill up this space so what I'm gonna do is do some more patterns and let's outline it with a cool tone so I'm gonna stop there as far as coloring but I encourage you to finish your picture really have fun with it really incorporate different patterns solid colors outlining materials and be as diverse and versatile as you possibly can but this is how far I've gotten so as you can see I have different shades of red different warm colors we have the yellow which is warm the orange which is warm if you can see I have outlined some of the shapes so for instance this shape has been outlined and then I incorporated a pattern in the middle this shape has been outlined with the gel pin and a combination of the permanent marker same thing with here I outlined this with a magenta permanent marker but then I did a yellow inside so have fun play around with the colors spread the colors around really don't concentrate too much in a certain area and then the more you work on it the more you'll start to see that things are kind of bringing itself together and a pattern will be forming so have fun be as perfect as you want or be as imperfect as you want but it's really about thinking about these patterns, thinking about tessellations, and being inspired by another artist. So thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed this virtual workshop, you can see this one and more at Arts Westchester's website, artsw.org. Thank you.